Jenny Hoyes has taken YouTube by storm within the last year. She's amassed an audience of over 1 million subscribers within only a 6 month time frame, making her one of the fastest growing creators in the world at only 18 years old. Her channel blew up. It literally blew up. But it wasn't always that way. You see, about two years ago, Jenny was at the lowest point in her life and was about to quit YouTube forever. So today, I'm gonna tell you how Jenny went from almost never doing YouTube again to becoming one of the fastest growing creators in the world. This is the story of Jenny Hoyas. From a young age, Jenny had a passion to entertain people. Before I started my YouTube channel, I actually wanted to be and like an actor or an actress and I was uh, in <laughs> in my theater in elementary school I did musicals I actually like played Willy Wonka uh, when I was like in third grade this passion for entertaining people eventually led her to starting her first YouTube channel she was only about eight years old at the time and she would make vlogs about hanging out with her friends and in middle school she would make funny little skits and then going into high school then I actually recorded every single day of high school and I put it in a hard drive that actually corrupted that I tried checking a while back. So like I, rec I, I vlogged like like crazy because I was, I was very inspired by David Dobrik. I even have a vlog, it's unlisted, where like I actually met David Dobrik. Like I hunted him down, um, just like following, like looking at his Instagram story and like trying to figure out where he was. And it like, it worked. It was such a, it's an interesting video, but it's, it's creepy. Cool. So I unlisted it. Jenny had an obsessive personality and this only amplified her love for making videos. But in middle school and in high school, she found that doing YouTube made it hard to fit in. Cause like I, I got, I got made fun of a little bit for doing it. So I took a, a quite a bit of a break. Twenty twenty rolls around and everyone is trapped inside their house with nothing to do. So Jenny started doing what every other kid was doing at the time, playing Fortnite. And I started playing this game called Fortnite. And I became obsessed with it and I tried to like go pro and make money. Jenny would grind Fortnite every day and she was actually getting pretty good. She thought this was what she was supposed to be doing. Until like one day like I think I got banned for like doing some sort of like glitch or something like, you know, you know how it is. And I was like, oh shoot, like I became so obsessed with it. Like I was genuinely trying to go pro and I was like a pretty good player. I'm like, oh, how am I gonna make money now? Like what kind of career do I have? She had put so much time and energy into trying to go pro in Fortnite. She didn't know what she was going to do after this. But one day Jenny was scrolling the internet and she came across the Leon Hendricks video titled, Why You Can't Find Your Passion. I saw this video on YouTube by like Leon Hendricks where it was like, you gotta find your passion if you want to make money like the passion comes first or something like that and then he he said in the video to like think about what you did as a child and what what your like dream job was or like a passion as a child and I'm like oh it was youtube i'm gonna start a youtube channel because that was my passion as a child maybe it's it's still like there even though i haven't done it like i took a two-year break she was sort of embarrassed to start a youtube channel because people had made fun of her in the past but because it was quarantine i'm like i'm gonna start it up i'm not gonna tell anyone no one's gonna know that i have a youtube channel until like it blows up, then it's not embarrassing anymore. I did it more of a passion project. I wasn't even trying to make money. I actually wanted to document my journey as an entrepreneur and I wanted to start a bunch of businesses. I was like, oh, one day I'm gonna be a billionaire. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna like document that story on my YouTube channel. But as soon as Jenny was about to start working, she got sick. I, I almost like completely quit my channel because like I have a lot of like underlying like health conditions. And like, I remember being in so much pain and I was like, I was like, I'm never gonna get better. Like maybe I can't be a YouTuber. Maybe this job isn't for sick people like me, if that makes sense. This means that if Jenny wanted to do YouTube, that it would be a big struggle. This was a very low time for Jenny. Everything in her life was pointing in the opposite direction of YouTube. While she was sick, she laid in bed and watched a lot of YouTube. And by YouTube, I mean she watched a lot of Ryan Trahan. Like while I was sick and like laying in bed, I watched like Ryan's like entire discography and it like just motivated me. Like I just see him going out and about and like despite like even seeing the penny challenge, I'm like, dang, like this is a struggle. Like and he's still doing it, something as crazy as this. Like it, it just also motivated me that like it doesn't matter like if you're feeling sick or if you're like, I guess like struggling, like you could still keep going. I don't know if that makes sense. This motivated Jenny and gave her an entirely new perspective. So the next week she got out of bed and was ready to get to work. Jenny joined this mentorship program called Creator Now. The first group of creators I met was through Creator Now because I joined when I had exactly 20 subscribers, 2-0. I remember it so vividly. 
and being in Creator Now also allowed her to talk with larger creators, such as Isaiah Photo and Eric. She began grinding and posting one video after the next. These videos weren't picking up that many views, but this was expected because she was still a fairly new creator at the time. She didn't really know what she was doing, so she decided to join this thing called a video roast. This is essentially when you could submit a video from your channel and get feedback from a larger creator. But this one was different. You see, the person that was going to be roasting Jenny's video was Hayden Hillier Smith. And if that name sounds familiar, it's because he was Logan Paul's editor. So Jenny submitted her I Learned Forex Trading in 24 Hours video. And let me tell you, Hayden did not go easy on her. The time lapse behind you is very distracting. There's no ups or downs yet that I particularly I'm not sure about yet. Dramatic hit for no particular reason. I, I think it's because like, you've seen people do it. But again, what's the reason as to why? Why did you get a headache? Because you because you gained a hundred dollars. But why? I I still uh, unfortunately I still don't quite understand how or why or what's happening. And then also, I am offended. You you you're investing into Doge. The feedback that Jenny received on her video would make some creators give up but Jenny only took it as constructive criticism. She now had some direction and knew how to make her videos better. She posted video after video for an entire year and once in a while she would have a video get a few thousand views. She began falling in love with the YouTube aspect of making videos instead of just using YouTube as a place to document her journey as an entrepreneur. She actually wanted to become a YouTuber and make a living from making videos. But from the time that she was on YouTube she had only gained around a thousand subscribers, which was nowhere close to being able to make a living on YouTube. So if she was going to do YouTube she needed to find a better way. June 15th, 2022. Jenny Hoyas posted a video titled, I made money on YouTube to prove it's not luck. Little did everyone know, this would be the last long form video that Jenny would post for a while, because Jenny was about to enter into a new chapter of her story, YouTube Shorts. Jenny had been posting YouTube Shorts for a while, Nothing really ever took off, but she saw potential in shorts. She posted a bunch of shorts and she would post them to both TikTok and YouTube. She found that her TikToks were getting a few million views, but her YouTube shorts were only getting around a few thousand. So she began studying what other creators were doing on YouTube versus what they were doing on TikTok. She found that creators were creating longer, more high quality videos for YouTube and creating shorter videos for TikTok. So Jenny began putting more time and effort into her shorts. She began posting less than once a week sometimes and making sure that the quality was top notch. And she stopped averaging as high of views on TikTok, but she began to average higher views per YouTube short. And sometimes she would even hit a million views. This was crazy. Her her channel was now actually starting to gain a bit of traction, and she was starting to understand how YouTube worked. Although she was doing good, she wasn't nearly where she wanted to be yet. She knew that she had much more potential. Jenny was scrolling YouTube one day and she found a video about Chipotle and how you can get an $8 burrito for only $3 by using a loophole within the menu. She thought that it was a super cool hack. Basically, like, I saw other people doing this uh, $3 burrito hack, but I saw, like, other creators weren't doing it in a fun, like, storytelling, funny, upbeat way. And I knew that I could, like, I knew it was viral, and I knew I could make it viral, if that makes sense. So she tried the hack out herself and found that it was actually a legit thing. So Jenny began making a video about it. Chipotle has $3 burritos? Apparently, you can order a taco for $3 and get the same amount of food as a burrito. But is it legit? I decided to make it. I remember posting it. I'm like, I think this one's going to do very well. Jenny hit upload on the video and she could have never imagined what happened. The views immediately started rising. She was gaining views faster than she had ever gained on the channel. This was her best performing video by far and she started to gain some publicity for it. News articles after news articles talking about how Jenny exposed a loophole within the Chipotle menu. So this girl, she posted this TikTok, it got like 20 million views, it went super viral. Oh, okay. And then there was this huge controversy because everybody started going to Chipotle using this exploit. It even got to the point to where Chipotle had to literally fix their menu. Jenny even had a brand reach out to sponsor her next short. She was on top of the world. She had just discovered a brand new formula to going viral on YouTube. 
Since Jenny had a sponsorship on the next video, she was pretty restricted on the ideas that she would be able to pull off. But the video still came out okay, and although it didn't get an absurd amount of views in comparison to the last one, it was still a top performer on her channel. But Jenny had 100% creative control over her next video, and Jenny now knew exactly how to make a YouTube short go viral, so it was Jenny's time to shine. She started off by posting how to get a free chicken sandwich, and that ended up getting 19 million views. Then she posted a $2 milkshake versus Chick-fil-A, and that got 16 million views. Then she posted $2 pumpkin spice latte at Starbucks, 29 million views. Then she posted $25 dart to find gold, 49 million views. Views. It seemed like the more that she would post, the more views that she would get per video. And after only a few more videos, Jenny had hit her first 100,000 subscribers. But although she was blowing up on shorts, something felt off. You see, the original goal was for Jenny to make full-length videos like her hero, Ryan Trahan. But she got so sidetracked by shorts that she almost completely neglected her original goal. Jenny was scared to go back and try making full-length videos again because she had no long-form audience. Audience. You see, it's very common for a creator to blow up on shorts, then try to transition over to long form, and the video absolutely flops. So she knew that if she was going to try long form again, that the video needed to be a banger. Jenny continued to post weekly YouTube shorts while she was cooking up a banger video in the background. The video that she was working on was going to be about Hustlers University. This was Andrew Tate's course at the time. Yeah, well, I already knew that, like, you know, Andrew Tate was a viral, like, a topic. And I saw that other people, like, small creators were getting tons of views talking about him. So I was like, if I do it, I, then it's going to be the same. Because, you know, if a small channel can do it, then... Technically, like, so can I, and I just need to make it better, because I saw someone else's video who got, like, a million views, and it was a terrible video. Like, if you can get a million views with a terrible video, then I can get a million views with a good video. Like, imagine, right? It took her a few weeks to make and perfect the video, then finally she posted it, and it quickly passed every other long-form video on her channel. And within a week, the video had around 500,000 views. Jenny was relieved by the fact that she was actually able to pull in a long-form audience. So she began working on more of a passion project video. It was a video about extreme couponing. Extreme couponing is essentially when you save up as many coupons as you can and shop strategically to the point to where you can get hundreds of dollars worth of groceries for only a few dollars. But yeah, I decided to make the video and it was mainly like, honestly, for fun. I'm just gonna make like what I feel like is a good passion project video. I knew couponing would be a pretty good video because my mom's like an extreme couponer and I know nothing about it. Jenny had a ton of fun making the video and she was eager to get it out. She didn't really care how it did because it was more of a passion project, but right before she posted it, her friends stopped her. I was about to upload it and I showed it to a couple of friends and they were like, yeah, but what's the title of thumbnail? I'm like, I don't know, maybe like I tried couponing. And they were like, no, that sucks. And then they, <laughs> they just like roasted me and were like explaining to me how you need to look through outlier videos. An outlier is a video that did really good for a specific channel. So if you find an outlier video, you know that the idea and packaging was really good. So Jenny searched up a few outliers and took inspiration from the titles and thumbnails. She uploaded the video and within a few days, it actually gradually overtook the Hustlers University video and views, even though it was just some little passion project. It was the best performing long form video on the channel up to this point. And the video is currently sitting at around 2.6 million views. This video surprised past every expectation Jenny had, and she was proud of it. During all of this, Jenny was still in Creator Now, and they were going to have another roast that was going to be hosted by Hayden Hillier Smith. Jenny knew that she had improved a ton from the last time that she was roasted by Hayden, but she still was nervous to submit the video because it was just a passion project. But Jenny was eager to hear what Hayden thought, so she submitted the video, and Hayden's reaction was shocking. I, I think bottom line is because I was really, really uh, impressed. I, but Jenny, like I said, compared to what you were making a year ago, compared to this, incredible improvement.